welcome to Taking Stock. This is the show where we take stock of the week gone by and prepare you for the next trading week. I'm Sonia Shinoy and with me as always is Anut Singhal. What a great week it was for the market. More importantly because we hit that psychological 30,000 level on the Sensex. Of course, Anuj, we did see some amount of profit taking towards the end of the week. But we termed it a healthy correction that the market could be looking at, right? Yeah, not, not healthy for those of course who bought on Thursday, Sonia. But yeah, I mean, you know, it looks like it's the start of first real correction for global markets. Uh, this is a global uh, p problem that the market faced. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the Nifty fuel to sustain above 9200. Uh, so there's not enough money, I guess, above 9200, uh, which is chasing stocks, which in turn is a good thing because the run-up has been too sharp. So maybe some sh small correction would provide the market the opportunity to then seek higher levels. Uh, uh, the bank Nifty showing some signs of tiredness. But you know, once again, this market is about individual stocks. Uh, the story of the week for me was uh, DMART, the way that broke out on Friday and really cross market cap of 45,000 crores. Uh, just telling you the kind of uh, scarcity premium which is available for good stocks right now. And the other story was the way Reliance surged, right? Nine year high for that stock. So stocks which have been in a funk for very long have now started yeah. to perform. In fact, that's the question that we're going to be asking all our experts. But first, let's take you through all the top headlines for the week. Quickly, uh, geopolitical tensions reign supreme on global sentiment this week. US targeted Syrian airfield in response to Tuesday's chemical weapon attacks. Global markets were a bit jittery and crude prices jumped. But of course, it was a week of new highs on Dalal Street. The Sensex hits the psychological 30,000 mark. The Nifty, the Bank Nifty and the mid-cap indices all hit all-time highs. And this week, the RBI maintained the status quo in its policy, held the lending rate steady at 6.25%, raised the rate at which it borrows from banks by 25 basis points, promises nimble open market operations to suck out excess liquidity. Okay, well, those were the top headlines, but there are plenty of other things to talk about. So joining us now on the show to discuss the week gone by are Ashish Sumaya, the MD and CEO of Motila Loswal AMC, and Manish Santhalia, the head equities at Motila Loswal Asset Management. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time out. Manish, let me start with you. Uh, you know, things have been going, things have been really good so far. Do you think that this market is in for a bit of a correction in the near term? If the correction comes, it's going to be very healthy um, because post demonetization, we saw the markets correct briefly to 7,900 and it's a one-way journey. Uh, I think there is too much of froth in the short term. And uh, believe it or not, you know, if you are a long-term investor, there is a long, big opportunity out here because not only have we seen GST go through both houses of parliament and you know, landmark reforms. And emerging markets as a as a basket is now becoming very favorable for from an indie, from a foreign investor's point of view. But short term, the markets have run up too soon, too fast. I think uh, you know if there is a correction, it would be a good opportunity to buy those individual stocks, whatever you want to buy. It's going to be a bottom up um, you know stock picking case in any case. So I'm more glad that the correction has come through, and it will provide a good opportunity for people who want to buy and maybe sitting on the sidelines, you know, get into the markets. Okay, uh, Ashish, uh, the uh, other uh, talking point, of course, has been the domestic retail money, which via mutual funds has been supporting the market and has stayed uh, intact. Uh, uh, do you see more flows into uh, the markets? And uh, as a fund manager now, is it getting a bit tough to manage the kind of money that you're getting now at these valuations? Yeah, I think uh, so. Flows are sustaining. There's absolutely no let up. You know, like we are in the first week of April, and any time now you will get the final numbers for what was the March collection. You know, in terms of gross flows, net flows, etc. And my bet is that it was pretty much more like 10,000 crore net flows, or somewhere in that kind of vicinity. In March. In March, yeah. So this is only mutual funds. I'm not talking about PMS or alternates. The, those are separate numbers altogether. And alternates are becoming a significant part of the market as well. So the point is that uh, there's no let up on flows at all. And uh, secondly, you know, like you mentioned about, uh, you know, you in fact in your previous statement you mentioned about a scarcity premium. So definitely, you know, last three times the market has gone to 8900 and come back because earnings didn't kind of uh, catch up. This is probably the fourth attempt where we are around 9,000 and everybody's having huge expectations. So keeping that in mind, uh, you know, definitely from a fund manager's perspective, a uh, huge amount of inflows uh, and, you know, there are few islands of excellence in the market. We have to be cautious. Okay. Uh, Manish, uh, you know, I, I know you don't want to talk individual stocks, but 
you know, the way Reliance and Larson and Tubro have come back, uh, what have you made of that? Uh, and do you get a uh, multi-year, uh, you know, the sort of uh, range has been broken on Reliance for sure, and Larson as well has been phenomenal the way that stock has moved. Uh, what is the market betting on? So the concern point on Reliance was the telecom business. And obviously when you had that specific number come through, that's, you know, that million subscribers, you know, that was a comforting mm -hmm. factor yeah. because people were betting on 10 crore subscribers to achieve a break-even and mm -hmm. if you had hit that 70 million subscribers, I mean, there's some ray of hope from this side of business. The rest of the businesses were doing extremely well. There was no doubt upon it. So I think that is the silver lining on Reliance's and market has actually rallied. Uh, the stock price has rallied. In the case of Larson and Tubro, I think now there is greater visibility that for the next three to four years, uh, you should be seeing a 15% CAGR. I mean, and that sort, of a, that sort of a thing is not there in the price. So I think that is what the markets are looking into. We own Larson and Tubro in one of our portfolios, so I am able to talk specifically more about this. Um, you know, I see a 15% CAGR growth in profits in Larson and Tubro between now and the next three, four years. So I think the valuations are perfectly comfortable. And in general case also, you know, large caps have more value than mid caps and small caps in any case. So that is the main reason why Larson and Tubro is adding. I think they uh, even more upside from these levels in the case of Larson. Okay, you know, apart from the heavyweights that Anuj was talking about, uh, it, it's been a great season for IPOs as well. Look at Avenue Supermart, something that you guys hold in one of your funds. You have Shankara that did extremely well. Um, some of these are niche stories. Do you see more potential here? So, I, I don't own uh, uh, DMART uh, in my portfolio for the simple reason that, you know, uh, today the markets are building in. Um, um, greater asset turns mm. and an increase in margins. So 15% margins may be going up to 18, 18.5% 18 sort of, um, and asset turns actually improving from what it was currently. So that is, you know, people who are actually buying the stock are looking into those aspects. Mm. And that is how they are able to justify valuations. Or put it simply, can you see 2024-25 earnings at 700 plus? I can't. So, you know, I don't have it in my funds, mm. uh, and so that's very specific. But otherwise, it's a great story, but maybe the price is not right for me to look into it. Okay, uh, well, the price is not right. Uh, Ashish, uh, we'll be uh, starting with the earnings season, of course, next week. Uh, uh, do you get a sense that this market is now in a position to absorb one more earnings shocker? or one more earnings disappointment? Or do you think earnings this quarter have to deliver, or the, at least the downgrade cycle has to end for this market to continue with the pace at which it's going? No, I think uh, not only does uh, the market expect uh, delivery on the earnings front, but also, you know, like a healthy trend, if you really ask me. Because there have been, like I said, there have been three disappointments in the last two years, you know, three attempts at 8,900. And one or the other accident has hit the market. And I don't think there is much scope to take more accidents at this point in time, right? Uh, plus also, you know, I'm also concerned from the experience that investors will have. Mm -hmm. Because people are walking in, uh, you know, see other asset classes are not serving them well, obviously. That's how equity becomes like a mainstay. So this is a kind of time when a lot of new people, any which way, start increasing allocation, even if they're not first time investors. Mm -hmm. So for, even from investor experience perspective, as well as from valuation perspective, I would be pretty watchful if there is, you know, any early signs of a uh, disappointment out there. Okay, there's definitely some caution in your voices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a short break. We'll come back and continue chatting about the markets. But as we do that, because this was a monumental week where we hit 30,000 on the Sensex, we got a lot of market opinion through the week. So let's hear some of the best uh, of the, uh, you know, the brightest minds in the business talk about how they're going to approach the market here on. We'll take a break and be back. I think the jury is out. It depends on what comes next, right? Uh, because uh, clearly Russia is a key backer. Uh, how does Russia respond? Uh, locally, Iran is a key backer. How does Iran respond? So those are part of the unknown unknowns that we'll have to see how they develop. Although it's been a strong rally, you have to say that it is also because there was a very weak November and December. So I am living on that, that it's a rally. It was needed, but it's not like run away and out of control in that sense. So our net exposure is still high. We are around 70% net. Uh, you know, in our fund, we are always short some 30 odd percent. Mm. Uh, sometimes it goes up to 40, 50%. Right now it's about 100 long and 30% short for a net of 70%. 
Emerging markets continue to um, record a uh, good amount of inflows. So mm -hmm. obviously some amount of money does flow through India, uh, whether from a domestic perspective or from a global perspective. But I think what matters in India much more is domestic liquidity. And that's mm -hmm. always been an attraction towards mm -hmm. India. And maybe that's finally happening as some of the savings that are redeployed back in equity markets rather than fixed deposits been a, an astonishing uh, rally start to the year. Um, maybe putting it in context and looking back more broadly at uh, emerging markets as a whole, uh, they have been out of favour for a very long time. Um, and suddenly you do see people talking again, the, the inevitable cycles that we have in sentiment uh, about emerging markets being a little more attractive now. Uh, and of course, India is one of those big markets that international investors will, will look to. And of course, there have been strong domestic reasons yeah. uh, for India doing well after the uh, demonetization scare. Mm -hmm. uh, scare is maybe too, too strong a word to use, but sort of hiccup. There is an element of momentum, certainly. Oh my goodness, markets have turned a bit. They're running. We better get on the bandwagon. Mm. And, and people jump immediately into things like ETFs, yeah. uh, for example. Uh, for investors like us, we, we never lost faith 